Hey guys, welcome back. Monday, June the 7th, Monday Morning Briefing, episode 34. I want to apologize about two things. One, we didn't have a podcast last week, nor did we have a Monday Morning Briefing video last week. Um, as we've mentioned in a previous episode, that uh, summer's out for many of y'all and, and for us as well. And so the kids are out of school. So it's really thrown off our schedule between Mr. Producer and myself. We've just kind of kind of been thrown off a little bit just because we you know trying to do stuff with the kids they're out they're here um in the mornings early and last week that's kind of what happened with the monday video i got here and got the piddling and got sidetracked and then by the time i got ready to do the video they were coming in because claudia wanted to get a bunch of shipments done early in the morning so the kids were here and everything else and videoing with the kids in the shop is almost impossible unless you want to hear my son driving nails into drawdown stands and uh, my little girl hollering about what kind of paint she can use over there. We just went ahead and just waited. Unfortunately, the, as the week went on, I just didn't end up having any other time to catch it up. No video last week, no uh, podcast. The one before, the latest podcast that came out the week before last was with Nigel Armitage from England. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and check it out. It's one of my favorites. He's a very interesting man to talk to, and that podcast is getting a lot of good feedback, so we're real happy about that. We will do our best going forward to keep these videos, especially the Monday videos, on schedule, because um, I know a lot of y'all have emailed me and, and tell me that you really enjoy enjoying the Monday morning briefing videos Tuesday morning over with your coffee. So. We'll do our best to kind of stay on schedule and keep that going and hopefully everything will everything will go well this morning they're going to the vet to take uh, one of the dogs in and i think a cat some of the critters out there now have lost count but anyway they're going to the vet they're not going to be in the shop till probably around lunch so i thought i'm going to get this video done and get it edited so we can get it posting so we can get this out to you guys by tomorrow a few things the ranch saddle that we were working on it went out last week so i wasn't able to get any footage of it but there is pictures of it on our instagram page we will also get pictures of it loaded it on on the website in our saddle gallery as soon as we can but we had to get that saddle shipped so it's gone it turned out really good I'm, i was really happy with it i hope the man that got it uh, really enjoys it but now we've got the roper left that we're going to go ahead and hunker down on and i've got another roper that i pulled up with it so we're going to kind of keep 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 them moving through keep going we got some repair that came in last week and we got some repairs finished and picked up so that was good a few other little things one little thing is these uh, we made a bunch of these. I made like four or five of these this uh, last week. Had a couple orders for them. But they're basically, if, you, if you're involved with the uh, ranch world at all, or if you day work, or if you've got day workers or cowboys that come into your shop, um, a, one of the big requests that we get anyway down here is fencing pliers for their saddle, uh, just to have a pair on them in case they need them. Um, no, depending on what's going on or whatever, they've got a pair where they're out of the way. Um, this pair here, this style here is designed for a, actually designed for the Moore Maker bull nose fencing pliers, the one that's shorter without the point on the end for uh, extracting fence staples. And that's what this one's actually designed for. It'll fit either one. If you've got a shorter pair with that spike, that's fine. That's what this one's designed for. This one is a modification of our original one. We could design this one years ago and uh, it's had a few little changes made to it over the years but this one here has the flap on the back with this buckle strap that goes through both pieces and basically the way this one works is you'd unbuckle this and slide this over your rear billet either on the off or on side um, rigging d so it'll go over the billet that hangs on the rear flank d and then it would buckle around on the front here and then this closes with just, I usually use a leather button. Um, the reason I use the leather button is because if you use a buckle, that buckle's going to break at some point because these guys don't oil them as well. And that little thin piece of leather you have to use, it's gonna break. When it breaks, you have to bring it in for me to repair. It's a pain in the butt for them. So most of the time they usually just never get repaired. And with a leather button, I can they can give me a phone call. I can make them up a leather button. They can swing by and pick it up, slip it in, and it's fixed. There's nothing that needs to be actually sewn or replaced or anything else. But this this was the original one. A good friend of mine down there, a uh, real good cowboy down there and stuff, he does a little bit of leather work. He modified this one years ago into what you see here, which has a tab here. We basically lost the flap. That way this, you can tie on your rear saddle strings on your housing um, you can tie that there and then it lays across your housing and then these two strings on the back will tie to the the same d-ring that flank d and that keeps them down flat low and out of the way but then you can take them on and off a lot easier they're not super low where they catch a lot of mud and everything else um, he just tends to like this style a little better so these are actually our top seller 
I will try to do a pattern pack for these. I'll let you know whenever I post it. Obviously, no tooling patterns or anything on this. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary. These things are utilitarian. They're just made to work, uh, you know, kind of get, get out there and, and do a job. And so if you wanted to tool them, you could tool the flap or something like that. But I may do a video making some of these and then do a little pattern pack as well. Um, I've already got the patterns kind of kind of perfected, so to speak, for us. So we'll try to get those goes going. Another thing, if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen that I got an early Father's Day present. But Claudia, I like knives, um, obviously, uh, working in the shop. But Claudia got, uh, and the kids got me this for Father's Day. And so it's a nice knife set for our kitchen counter. And of course, I, don't, I can't just put it in the house like that, even though this wood is really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little project where I'm gonna I'm gonna cover this in leather basically and put our brand in it, uh, the key brand in there, and then and put that on our counter. I think it'll look really cool. But that's gonna be kind of fun. I may do a video if, if any of y'all are interested. Uh, pattern pack's gonna kind of be hard because you have to have that exact knife set. So we'll kind of deal with that as we go along. We made a lot of progress on the bag last week. We actually did a lot of bags, like say Thursday to Saturday, we started working on bags because this bag has been sitting and obviously many of y'all have been wanting to see it put together and so has the customer. So we needed to camp on that. So since that branch saddle was gone and we're in between, I went ahead and jumped on it and we got all both the gussets in there. So it's two compartment. So you can see there, there's double compartments in there for laptop, whatever you got, whatever you want to put in there. And then you've also got a pocket here on the back for just kind of quick access. You got a file or something coming out of a building or an office, you can stick a file in there pretty easily get a hold of it um, the pattern I do I will have a pattern pack for this the printers are working on all our patterns in fact the first draft so to speak the first print is going to be for the wristlet purse in a printed pack now if you've already got the PDF you don't need this because if you've already printed off you've already made some you already have the patterns they're gonna be exactly the same they're just gonna be printed. If you've been wanting to buy that one, but you don't wanna print them, you're just, you know, you have trouble downloading them and getting them printed the right size or anything like that, just hang tight if that's one of the ones you wanted, because that one probably will be here today or tomorrow printed, and we'll figure out how to get it on the website. But I'm doing that one first to see, make sure everything works and how it's gonna look and all that. Then we'll start getting some of the older ones made. But for new ones, those will be our main focus. We have this pattern is already being created. I've been creating it as I go along, making little notes, changing it, and it will be a full printed pack with some tooling patterns, as well as um, the, all the pieces that you need and to measurements and everything like that to cut this thing out. Um, it will be only available in printed version and the sheets will be large to where you can take that and you can make your patterns however you want to off of those sheets but it'll be the big fold out sheets in an envelope but one of the things is this is going to be a really neat closure hopefully next week i can show you that um, how it closes but there's going to be a, a leather loop that goes through this box hole here and that leather loop needs to be sewn on the front on my pattern the physical pattern that i created to make this bag i have it figured out mathematically where that needs to be but i was apprehensive that when this thing actually goes together maybe i want it a little lower maybe i want it a little higher so i thought i'm going to wait and as hard as it's going to be it's not going to be super difficult but i'm going to have to hand sew that in place um, with obviously getting down in the bag and out of the bag here uh, it's going to be a little difficult but to me that's the easiest way to ensure that i get it in the exact right spot so that my lid's not cocked either way or maybe too high or too low so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll measure where it sets. It'll be on the pattern. So when you buy this pattern, you'll know exactly where to put that on. You can put that uh, box loop on there before you put the front on the bag. And so that'll make it a lot easier. Have been shooting a video for this, so I've got a ton of footage on this bag. And so now that it's together, we've got to do all the edge slicking on all the seams, and then we'll figure out our hanger for the D-ring for a strap. It's just gonna have one strap. I am gonna design a handle for this bag as well. The customer really wasn't interested in having a handle there, but I think the bag's gonna need a handle just so that when you take it off, you've got something to hold the bag with. Otherwise, you're gonna be holding it by the strap. And um, so we'll get that kind of figured out and get that put on there as well. But the bag's coming out good. And again, this is the Expedition, which is what we, we got from Maker's Leather Supply, but it's a Herman Oaks uh, 1880. Um, waterproof leather so it is a veg tan type of chap leather really it looks like chap leather but it is a veg tan it's not a chrome tan or an oil tan and it's completely waterproof and it's a really really nice leather it's making a very nice sturdy bag we did line it 
with three four ounce um, Herman Oak veg tan and I think it just gives it a really nice look on the inside because the inside of this leather isn't very attractive so um, in fact I got a piece of it here and I've shown you before but it's just it's just not super attractive and so I want to go ahead and line that so the inside of the bag is nice but that's the bag if you've been wanting to see it put together hopefully um, it's turning out the way you envisioned it um, it is for me it's turned out the way I way I thought it would so we'll get that rolling and hopefully get that finished this week as well another bag that we worked on Claudia had an idea for a little tote and um, I don't know if any of y'all have heard or maybe if you've seen it but the Heart of Texas Leather Show is going to be in Waco in August and I think it's the 6th, 7th and 8th or something like that but it's that weekend that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're going to be there. We are teaching a class. I did get word this week, uh, this past week that the class has sold out. So our class that we're teaching on belt design, we're going to do one on tooling. So we'll bring some belt patterns, uh, strip patterns, and then um, everybody in the class is actually going to get a belt material pack to make a completed line belt like we make. We're going to focus on tooling one section because I want to take one section from tooled to, we're going to do the two-tone finish that I do, either black or brown, whichever they prefer, and we're going to antique it. So I want to take them from tooling to dyeing and then into the antiquing process so we can do that together because we still get a lot of questions on my finish process even though we've done videos and you can go back and look at those on our antiquing process and so i think if we do that in person it'll be a little bit more clear and we may come back to that in another video and kind of reiterate what our antique process is but that's what the class is going to be unfortunately like i said it's sold out but we will be at the show we will have a booth we'll be near makers leather supply there in the trade show so if you can make it to Waco and you're going to come to that show, come check us out. Stop by the booth and visit. We will have a bunch of stuff there, hopefully a lot of printed packs. So if there's some that you've been wanting, we're going to try our best to get as many printed before then as possible and have those there. And plus some other goodies that are going to be fun and uh, interesting. But we'd love to visit with you. Come by the booth if you're going to be there. But with all that being said, Claudia wanted a bag. We're actually we're making the yoke tote. Haven't made any progress on that. I wanted to hit on that this weekend, but just didn't have the time. Um, but it will be done and it will be there. Claudia said that it needs to be on display because it's taken me so long and so many people have looked at that bag. So it'll be in the booth. Um, I was hoping she'd carry it. She probably will a little bit, but it, mainly it'll be there. So if you want to look at it, it'll, it'll be there and you can kind of see how we constructed that. But she said she needs a bag. So we came up with a prototype. Um, I had some of this yellow glove tan. It's a gold glove tan from Hyde House out in California. And so we went ahead and made it here out of this and it's got two pockets in the front and then it's got a zippered pocket in the back here and this bag was really challenging i've never made a bag like this before and it turned out really cool in order to build this bag i used a concept that tanner claridge put on his instagram it may have been a couple of years ago but we talked about it in the podcast interview that we had with him and the way he designs these bags and i thought his pattern making skill and that one video i'd seen a couple of years ago i thought man that's really neat and so I've done it for another bag that we kind of put together and I never really finished. But when Claudia was talking about that this this size of tote kind of thing, I thought, well, let's give that a shot. And so it did work out. We had to change a bunch of things because of these two pockets here. Um, and this bag is completely lined with some chocolate goat skin, the same goat skin we've been selling in the bifold wallet material packs. And uh, it made the inside of this bag really, really nice. But the bag went together well. And so she's going to pick out some leather. This one, I don't know what we'll do with it. I've got some more plans for the D, which I'll maybe show you next week. Hopefully, if I get that done. I don't want to show you right now because I think it's going to be kind of cool. Um, and then we're going to do one strap. And so it'll be, kind of be like a crossbody deal with uh, D here and here. But she's going to pick out some leather now that she wants color-wise. Um, she actually really liked this once we got it done. But we just used this because I had a bunch of it laying around. And in case the bag didn't work out, we could chunk it in the garbage and not worry about it. She's going to pick out some leather and then we'll make a bag like this for the show. And that way she can carry it around. That was a fun project. That was really cool. Claudia uh, and I worked on that all day Saturday and uh, well, most of the afternoon and got it off made and got a pattern pack or pattern started for it so i'll try to do a video once we get it kind of perfected and tweaked and and, and do a few little refinements because it's not not just the way i want it then we'll do a pattern pack and a video of this bag as well i don't build a lot of bags and many of y'all who have been following us for a long time have probably heard me say more than once that i'm not a bag maker i'm not a purse maker and i'm really not but I am getting more interested in the bags, especially the larger bags like the briefcases or the big totes. They're kind of fun. Uh, it's some way to just kind of break the, the normal deal. I love building saddles. That's my passion. That's what I do. 
Uh, and um, I don't think I'll ever get tired of that at all. But the bags are kind of something fun where I come in here on a Saturday, we'll have breakfast tacos and the kids are here. We're kind of just messing around and piddling and cleaning the shop. I can tinker on a bag and um, and have a lot of fun. It's not something that I'll probably ever build a lot of as far as for customers. We've always built on request if somebody wants a certain bag, but I've never really focused heavily on that. But I am having, having a good time kind of piddling with these, kind of coming up with some new patterns and stuff. So that's a lot of fun. So that's about all I got for you. This is gonna be a really short episode. I'm sorry about that. I gotta let y'all go kind of early because today's Monday. I've got a lot of things I've got to get done in the shop today. And I'm gonna, I say this every week and I'm gonna say it again, but be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. And you can do that on our website at dgsaddlery.com. You're gonna wanna be on that newsletter list by the end of day today. We've got some products that are coming out on that newsletter that you're probably gonna wanna know about. So if you're interested in that, be sure and uh, hop on there or just keep perusing the website. Uh, this week, we've got a number of things that we're gonna we're gonna add to the website uh, and get uploaded today um, by the end of the day. And so you're gonna wanna be a part of that. It's just a good idea too, to be a part of the newsletter just so that you don't miss anything whenever we send it out. Um, and if you, ha if you have signed up for newsletter, but you haven't gotten anything from us, um, we've been sending them out. I think we've sent two or three out last month. But if you haven't been getting them and you're wondering what's going on, you're, you should have gotten a confirmation email to confirm that you do want to sign up for this new newsletter. If you never saw that, check your spam folder. You may have gotten it in there, but you have to confirm it on your end. Um, we do that kind of opt-in thing to just to make sure that we get somebody that really wants to be a part of it and it's uh, it's not somebody that just accidentally or you know signed up for it or whatever. So if you, we don't want to send you stuff if you don't want anything in your inbox from us. And if you don't, that's fine. Just keep an eye on the website this week and you'll see what's going on. But um, if you'd rather be notified the minute that it is um, up on the website and ready to go, then get on that Leathercraft newsletter and get signed up. Um, I hope to see all you guys in Waco uh, in August. We've got a couple months here to kind of get ready. And so we've, we're kind of running around here like crazy to try to get everything done, get everything collected, get everything ready to go. And uh, so, we, so we can see all you guys there. If you are gonna be there, come by and visit with me and uh, check us out at the booth. Check out our friends at Maker's Leather Supply. There's gonna be a lot of good suppliers there, a lot of good people there. It's, it, it's the first year of this show, but I think it's gonna be really good. And uh, we're really excited. Uh, as far as the podcast, hopefully we'll have something next week. We probably will not have a podcast this week. Uh, producers got some conflicting schedules. I've got some things going on here, here at the shop and uh, some interviews that I'm still waiting to get scheduled up and stuff like that. So unfortunately, we're going to be dark a couple weeks in a row right there, but we'll, we'll get on track. Like I said, summertime, everybody's kind of running around and on vacation and doing this and doing that. Everybody knows what that's like. So we'll get it going and we'll get back on track as soon as we can. I hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy your summer. Summertime's here. Hopefully you're getting a little bit of the rain that we're getting. If you're not, be patient. I'm sure you'll get some. But I appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all next week in the Monday Morning Briefing.